Rob, it's Slim Show. Hey, Rob. And Slim. What's up, man? <laughs> Just gonna ignore me like I don't yeah. fucking exist Fuck or something? Fuck him, Spicoli. Yeah. He ain't even here. Hanging up I, on you, Spicoli. I stuttered. I stuttered. <laughs> you know, I was, hang I was watching Mel Tillis films earlier. Yeah. Spicoli, want to hear the biggest insult in the world? Somebody once said, like, we played one of your lines, your narrator lines, and they were like, oh, it's Slambo, right? Oh, oh no. <laughs> I didn't think that's what they said, did they? Yeah, that oh, was... So, oh, really? They were like, oh, that's Slambo that does the Morgan Freeman impression, right? <laughs> yeah, because I'm, I'm screaming like him, too, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah! Yeah, yeah! <laughs> I just don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> oh, God. How have you been, dude? Time. What's that? How are you? How's your year been? We're good, good. we're good. How you been? I'm I'm good, man. I'm I'm getting along, you know. You are. You're, you're one of the, you're in my opinion. You're one of like the founding fathers of like at least live, because like when we first started, you were like one of the few other like live shows that we that we came across. Smitty and I were talking about that last week on the show, and he's like, "Dude, we got so many DVDs. We need to go through." So I looked through this week, and I found show number two that we did here in the shed tw eleven years ago. 11 years ago and wow. we were using like we were using cameras but they weren't high def you know and yeah. we were using capture units to get to to get the stream going and it was like man cuz it was the it was the you know everything was just now changing too Wild everything West. Going, everything changing and just also just figuring everything out back then when did yeah. you uh, when did you eventually take it live Oh, we were live from the beginning. From the beginning. Really? Wow. Wow. That's cool to hear because so many people, like, you kind of had to coax into doing live. Like, we wanted to go live as soon as we could, but yeah. But yeah, just, so many people just don't do not do the live thing at first. I also well, we feel like when you, when you started, you said 11 years ago, or whenever you started, like, it must have been harder to yeah. go live because, like, we didn't have, like, all the live services that we have yes. now. Yes. True, true. But when we first started, we were at public access, which is like a oh. free. And we integrated, we brought in laptops and started doing a live stream at the same time we were on TV. Oh, wow. So we were going worldwide as well as local at the same time. Do you still and, do the public access? Oh, yeah. No, hell no. No, they, they're they not free anymore. <laughs> oh, I didn't know if it ever was. That's what I was going to ask. Like, how much yeah. would public access cost? In the beginning, it was free. Wow. And you had to take the course, and you got, like, a 16-show season. And we did four seasons. Wow. And the next time, they said, look, they dropped the funding. Um, we're going to have to start charging. You can get a you can get a sponsor. I'm like, okay, so what does my sponsor get? And they're like, well, we'll give them a... Uh, a credit at the end of the show. I said a rolling credit. Well, you know these people are going to be spending. You're you're asking for five hundred dollars a season. Oh wow! Yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot. How the fuck do you go from zero to five hundred dollars? Right? Holy shit! And that's, that's like, when yeah. I looked at Smitty. I said, "We got to do something." And he's like, "Well, I don't know." And I'm like, "Well, I got this shed in my backyard, and we, I can move some shit around, and we can try it." <laughs> oh. So they actually, you ha actually had a studio. Yeah, we were working out of a studio at Public Access, and wow. I was bringing in my own stuff. And we we're back then. We started out. UStream was the very first, yeah, one, and then Stickcam came along. And Stickcam was so much better. Really? Oh, wow. oh, when they first started. Do you remember back in the day when they did the videos and you could go on? I forgot what Chat Roulette. Do you remember that? I yeah. do remember that. Yeah. Yes. Stickcam had a version of that, and they called it uh, Stickcam Roulette or something. So we would do that after the show. And and I I'm swear we sat in here one night till four thirty in the fucking morning. <laughs> the, the camera will you can you either hang out with the people or they don't like you and they hit switch and you go to the next person. Well yes. that's when we broke out the puppets. And we're like you know, people would be they just switch around because the bad part was back then it was like every tenth camera was a dick a guy yeah. with a dick. Yeah. And it was like, Oh, oh come on. Yeah. So we're like, All right, we're we're gonna we're gonna uh, re up them. So <laughs> As soon as the dick guy would come on, he'd see this puppet on the other end. He's like, what the fuck is this? And what am I jerking to? I can't jerk to that. <laughs> exactly. 
<laughs> and, and the expression on these people's faces, and uh, we had a, quite a few of them that would, were really in a bad mood. And then <laughs> when we left after telling them a thousand jokes, they were laughing their ass. No, don't leave. No, no, no. The camera went from their dick to their smiling face. <laughs> You you've converted a lot of jerkers. I like that. Converted a lot of jerkers, boy. That's not a t-shirt. I converted a lot of jerkers. Spicoli TV Fridays at night. Year, years ago, um, probably like yeah, probably like ten years ago, I, I had an apartment with this dude. I'm not really friends with him anymore, but all right, whatever. Doesn't matter. But we uh, we had a camera right. set up on the TV in the living room, and we were doing the chat roulette, and it, there was like five or six of us and one girl. And we came across, uh, like, these two dudes, and they were like, we want to see the girl's tits. Like, show us your tits, show us your tits. So my fucking buddy comes up and just pulls down his pants and just shoves his balls in the, in the camera. <laughs> Why aren't you doing the show with him now, son? You should still be with that guy. <laughs> did, did guys, like... Click away or no? They stayed on for a yeah. little bit. I mean, they were all right with it. They were like, "All right, we get it. Like, it's, yeah. we wanted to see some something sexual." Hopefully, like, I'm yeah. drunk enough in the morning where I don't forget. <laughs> I don't remember this, and I came and I it's slept good. It's still for a sack. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> it was tits, man. It was fucking tits. It was not balls. It was not balls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the show was called. It's not balls. <laughs> it's not balls. It's tits. It's tits. I want to tell you guys again. This is the third or fourth time that you've had me on, and I'm 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 thankful that you had me on. I love you guys, and Thank you. every time you have me on, the guest before me is outstanding. I just want to tell you that. That's awesome. That's awesome to hear. I do love. I was. I had it in the notes. Just seeing your feedback, either either if it's just in the comments on the live show or if it's in like uh, messages. I always appreciate your comments about uh, I mean, other interviews and all that. It, I don't know how you find these people. I don't know how much you're paying them or slipping them on the back side, but they're nothing. fantastic interviews. Man. I I no. broke, but, but yeah. But Skull, Spicoli, you have to also remember that like you come after that guest, so you might be saying that guest is amazing. But you're the headliner. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, now I feel really, really I'm I, humble. Thank you. I set you up, my friend. <laughs> I, really, uh, I'd like to pay homage to TC, that guy you, you interviewed. Too. And my grandfather's name was TC, so I really look up to that nickname. I what, really, awesome. I, what did his name stand for? I thought uh, like maybe Titty Cupper and, and, and someone's thinking like Tim Coupo. Uh, my grandfather was, uh, his name was Talmadge. Clarence Ooh. and T.C. Williams was his name. If you remember that name, you probably heard it. It was in a football uh, movie with uh, Denzel Washington. What, what was that movie he did? Uh, God, I can't think of the name of it right now. Oh, uh, shit. It was like in the 60s or something. It was a segregated movie about blacks and whites, but it was a, a great football team. T.C. Univers Williams oh. University. My grandfather loved that when he found that out. I was like, oh, my God. I never heard enough wow. about it. My cool. grandfather was a great man. He was a World War II veteran, so I really respected that man. I think my grandfather was too. I think so. I think that was like the thing back in the day. Like, you, if you were a grandfather, you had to be. You had man. to be. Uh, or like at least a Korean War veteran. At oh, least. Uh, oh, they, they, man, those guys fought hard for us, man. They're, yeah. They're, they're the reason we're doing what we're doing right now. I ain't willing <laughs> to go to war. I'm going to Canada if there's ever a draft. Fuck that shit. That's right. I got a passport. <laughs> Canada or South America, bro. <laughs> Speaking of going, uh, coming up to see you here in a uh, couple of weeks. I was gonna say. In your direction. Where are you going? Uh, we're staying in Newark. We're flying in Newark, and then we're gonna go visit the city a couple of days. But um, cool. yeah, like to hook up with you at some point. Mm. Yeah, definitely. When, Absolutely. Um, I know the trains uh, go everywhere, and we're staying all at the airport there at the Marriott because the trains go running in and out of there. So. I'll get a hold of you guys when we get up there for sure, and cool. uh, we'll hook up for sure and go ah, have definitely. a beer together. Yes, yes, yes. When is it that you're coming down? Uh, the day after Christmas. Okay. Yeah. I'll cool. be there from the 26th yeah. to the 29th. Nice, nice. Yeah, we'll definitely, okay. definitely we'll have make. Yeah, we'll definitely make some time. Yeah. For that tonight, I'm actually sitting in my shed, and I didn't turn the heater on, and it's cold in Florida right now. It's about 48 outside. That's what I was gonna ask. How? Uh, what's the coldest this ever gets down there? Uh, it's gotten in the 20s. Okay. Wow. Wow. Yeah. It's, we've had some hard freezes. Wow. We haven't had any good snow. We had, the last good snow we had was in like the 80s. 
like 81, and it didn't really stick. In <laughs> 77, it stuck. And we got about an inch and a half in 77. Wow. Wow. That's crazy. My father waking me up. It's snowing outside. I'm like, God, you're full of shit. I'm going back to sleep. <laughs> get out there and play. <laughs> <laughs> you get out there and play. You'll never see this again. <laughs> yep. Actually, we all went to school, and they all let us go out in the schoolyard, and we all made one-foot snowman. Everywhere you drove around town, it was a one-foot snowman. Ah, <laughs> yes. There yes. wasn't enough snow to stick on the ground that much. So. Did any of them have, like, cigarettes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. I figured, I figured. A lot of them had dicks. Oh. The, car the carrots were in the wrong spot. <laughs> and put the dick on the snowman. <laughs> My favorite song of all time. I've been playing it this week on the show. God damn. What has been one of your favorites, Wigali? What's been one of your favorite too many rapes? My favorite shows, oh man, anytime that Smitty can get me to laugh, <laughs> the, the stories that he tells. I would say my absolute favorite story that he's told so far has been the poop story. What's that? And that's, he was taking a car ride with his wife one time, and his dog was in the back seat, and they were going somewhere. And he's like, man, the wife goes, it, it smells like poop in here. And he's like, why does it smell like poop? And she goes, I don't know. And you look in the back seat, and the dog dropped a couple turds in the back seat. <laughs> So he grabs a cup and tells his wife, we'll scoop it up and just throw it out the window. Well, she's like, I'm not doing that. And she's like, take me to a park. And I'm like, take you to a fucking park? Why? Just scoop it up and throw it out the damn window. <laughs> and he goes into detail about it. I'm laughing my ass off. And we got it on. It's on our YouTube channel. I've, that's one of my favorite stories. That's I, good. That man tells the best stories, man. He is so... <laughs> And he ain't making this shit up. It it happens. <laughs> How long have you known Smitty? Is is he uh, like were you friends before the show? Oh yeah, I've known Smitty since uh, high school. Okay, because like I don't know, we and some of talking about like off the show, like we weren't really friends like when we started, but over the years we've we developed a friendship. It's really weird because it's opposite of what you hear from most radio hosts. Is I hear a lot of times where these guys were like best friends and they do a radio show together and then they like end up like breaking up or whatever. But like Rob and I were the opposite, where we were just like Mutual two guys didn't really know places. each other. Yeah. yeah, Rob was like, ah, I was in radio and I'm like, I want to do creative shit or something. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we just like got together and did it. And like over the years, we've gotten closer and closer. Like, especially like this year, like we've gone out and we're hanging out a lot more and stuff like that. And it's just, it's, it's different and, and, and um, more interesting than, than what you hear the normal story of like, ah, I've known this guy since elementary school. Yeah. That's good, though, because chemistry is everything when you're working with somebody, especially in, in podcasting, radio, television, whatever. Yeah. You've got to be able to communicate and also know when to talk and when not mm -hmm. to talk, you know, and that's that's key. And, and also to be on the same wavelength. And when I first started doing this, when I was at Public Access, the guy I was working with, we just didn't gel. And I had him in the background just for somebody to talk to because I hate doing it by myself. I cannot entertain the audience. I can my, entertain myself as a little kid. <laughs> I feel the same. I can't entertain an audience by myself for yeah. an hour. It's so different. I feel like it would be a totally different fucking couple If of I have something to bounce back off of, yeah, I can do it all night long as long as somebody you know, can go you know, talk to me. And, and so... I had to get rid of him, and I'm like, man, I got to find somebody I can gel with. And I call my buddy, and I'm like, hey, man, do you want to do this with me? He's like, yeah, I'll give it a try. And he did it the first night, and then he did it again, and he kept coming back. And I'm like, you're starting to like this. And he's like, yeah, man, it's this is kind of fun. And I'm like, well, that's the only reason I'm doing this is for fun. I mean, it's – and then it just became more and more of, well, how can we entertain the audience? How do we entertain the audience? And it was – how do we bring the audience in and how do we keep them there? Keep them there. Yeah, I agree too with the fun. Like, it's got to be. It's got to be just for yourself. It can't be. Not that it can't be for anyone else, but it. you have to enjoy it. You have to enjoy it. It can't what? start feeling like work. Like, yeah. I was thinking about that oh. today. Like, I, I've had a long work week. It's like a 66-hour work week. It was just fucking terrible. And I wasn't. Like, when I came to this, like, I had off yesterday and I had today, and I'm excited. I'm like, ah, today we're going to do this I show. Felt. Like, just to be and off of my yeah, regular routine and like, or shitty like work. Like, some people say, oh, it seems like a lot of work. And in a sense, like, there's some work involved. It but, is. like, 
it's still a lot of fun and you enjoy it and you look forward to it. Yeah. You know, Fridays I sat here and, and I, I'm, I do most of the pre-work, you know, on the computer. I work the computer and Smitty just kind of chimes along. He has, you know, other input that he uses, but I run the entire show off of the computer in front of me. So I've got to have it all prepped and ready to go. And a lot of times, like you said, it's been a rough week. You, you hardly got any show prep in and here we are Friday night and, and plus a lot of times I'll grab dinner. We'll have dinner before we do it and we'll just chat for a few minutes and I'm in the worst mood sometimes. Right. And he walks in the door and cracks one joke and it's completely different. It's like, fuck yeah, yeah I'm ready to do the show now. Oh, that's cool. I've I've had that experience with this show with Rob where I've I've had weeks where I like I cannot function like in full depression over some stupid shit and I'm like I'm not going to be able to do a show and I sit down and I turn the mics on and it all goes away. There's an energy. There's a yeah. definite energy that happens. I call it therapy. Yeah, yeah, yeah it I is a form therapy. of therapy. Rob had said that I think when we first started. He 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 had said that in the beginning that like this that doing radio was a form of therapy. Yep, absolutely. Well, Rob can relate because he has kids like I do. So <laughs> right. he, he can relate. This is the only way we can get shit out because you can't talk to your kids like this. No, yeah. no, definitely get, not. Hey, son, you know I was really I was talking to my friend the other night about jerking off, and you know I was like, well, and I was like, you can't. So this is therapy. You can talk about whatever the hell you want. Yeah. And, yep. Exactly. And, and it usually leads to some kind of pussy or jerking off joke. Right. At one exactly. A lot of dick jokes. Um, a lot of dick jokes. Spoko, I did want to say, like uh, earlier, you were talking about how you have to uh, know. Um, when to speak and when not to speak when you're doing a podcast and you have to uh, build that chemistry. <laughs> Rob and I have had this conversation several times about our beloved uh, third Mike. I'm not going to mention his name. Nobody knows who he is. It rhymes with Lamborghini. It, 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 it rhymes, rhymes with, with Lamborghini. Lamborghini. <laughs> but over the six years that we've done this, he has not gained any social awareness He's at all. not improved. <laughs> He's oh not improved God, yeah. one iota, Spicoli. Like, he does not understand. He can, Like, I, I always say that you have to know how to read the room. This guy, like, six years and still digressed. cannot read the room. <laughs> <laughs> That's the worst part, especially when he's sitting right across from you. <laughs> and then he gets mad at me. He gets, he's, I, I fucking kill him. He's just fucking giving me death yeah, looks. Yeah, so pissed. The whole month. But we're calling him out. And it's like, how, you've been doing this for five years. How do you not understand how this works? Or, like, understand <laughs> what least, is appropriate to yeah, say something? Yeah, got some sort of a clue. Yeah. <laughs> you fucking dummy. <laughs> I'm not the only one who's experienced that on their show before. <laughs> but he will smear whatever he, I tell him on his stomach, so I keep him around. <laughs> oh, he's fantastic. Yeah. He's, he's one of a kind. You have to keep that guy around. You'll never find another personality like that. No, never. <laughs> so, Goli, I don't know if you heard me wrong earlier, but I asked what is one of your favorite uh, too many rapes this season. Oh man! Well, I you know what? It, going back to last week with the Roman baths, oh. I I was so so happy to hear that. I was I loved you, just you suggesting that. I love that. <laughs> well, I was like, well, we we've, we've taken out Hitler and we've done we talked to Jesus and where could they go next? Yeah, we no, somewhat like, saved Jay in, in here. I mean, who could be next? I'm like <laughs> Roman bathhouses. Yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> that was great. I love too just some of your some of your lines when uh I hear you laugh. I hear that even though I edited it out for the performed version, like just your laugh is great. Just yeah, it's, it's the best. It's the best. Well, I I I I I made the worst mistake in radio kids in podcasting. When you're doing copy, you're supposed to read the copy first. And a lot of times I just dry read it. I kind of thought that. Yeah. I don't know what's better, though. Sometimes it's better just... Well, yeah, right sometimes you get a better reaction mm, as yeah. you're reading it, and you're like, holy shit! Yeah. <laughs> and so you're, you're <laughs> you know, you're, uh, what do they call that, though, when you're talking? I can't, fuck. And the thing. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I want to say Inception, but it's not Inception. You know what I'm talking about. When you're, when you're talking like that, you don't just want to be monotone. You want to, you know, get into it. Yes. So, that's that's how you become better at it. 
Yeah. L- little uh, behind the curtains here, I never read <laughs> the too many race. I don't scripts. expect you to. I and want I you can't. to be totally. Everything is just like new to me, <laughs> and I try my best to like. All right, I'm playing the Driz here, like, and I'm just going off of what the narrator said or whatever is going on in the situation, and I'm going to do the best to uh, uh, f- bring out this. Um, what is it? Uh, uh, situation. Moment, this moment, the character yeah. in this moment, and then like the Driz songs, completely improv. Yes. I have no clue what Rob has written for the Driz song until we are in the middle of the script. Yeah, and I read maybe about three sentences ahead. Like maybe you'll be doing us, uh, Spicoli will be doing a narration, and then I'll yes. jump ahead and, and find the Driz song, and I'll read and what the Driz has to say. It's always go, just okay. the Driz sings and the subject. It's never <laughs> anything else. Like this. Week was like the dressing warts in my shorts. Yeah, and that's what I did. Today's episode is a great example. In the middle of Spicoli's narration, I scrolled down, tried to find the Driz song, and I saw Driz, uh, a warts in my short. Said so I was like, yeah, I had a pimple on my ass this morning. This works. I feel like too, like those Driz songs are the creepiest window to Slim Soul. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> the darkest region of his soul. Yeah. 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 Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> I love oh, the Elvis Driz. The Elvis Driz is something that's made me so happy lately. The uh huh. Yeah. You guys got to make me a drop on here and, and use that at the end. <laughs> this is Robin Slim where you're on Spicoli TV, but I got to have that. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah. I, I, we're almost out of time, Spicoli, but do you have any yeah, well, uh, well, let me do this. for wait, a Driz song? Wait, h- how about this, okay. Spicoli? Real quick, we'll, we'll do this because the Driz just kind of heard what you said, and he was like, let me take care of this. Yeah, what up, Spicoli? Yo, rap it, kid. What's up, y'all what, dude? Y'all what up, man? Yo, you want to drop or some shit like that? Yo, listen to this fucking... You got to fucking record this. I, I hope you got the right fucking software and shit like that. Because I want this to sound like fucking amazing. Like, I want it to be... You know, it's got to sound like awesome. But here it goes. So give me a second to pause. This is going to be this. Y'all what up? This is the Drez. Yeah. And you're listening to fucking Spicoli TV. Yeah. He, he thought a bunch of cool shit and stuff. Yeah. You got to fucking love this. Yeah. Yo, that was fresh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can't wait to chop that up. That's, that's gonna go nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna take over the YouTube podcasting world, people. Damn right. Yeah. yeah that's by calling before you know it. You're gonna be internet famous because they're gonna be like, yo, that guy, the fucking Driz. He fucking did a line or some shit in Spicoli's show. Yeah. He knows the Driz, yo. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh, yeah. Yo. Uh-huh. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Spicoli, you rock, dude. Where can everybody find you? Rob, you guys can find me over at SpicoliTV.com is the website. Uh, we are on Facebook. We are on the Twitter. You can listen to the shows on Spotify. You can listen to the shows on iHeartRadio as well. Nice, dude. Nice. We will be listening. All right, brother. I will get a hold of you guys when yes. we head up north. Absolutely. Definitely. We will do everything we can to meet up with you, man. Fuck yeah. I'll nice. kick a Mexican guy in the dick. I will have a hobo spit on Slambo just for you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Happy holidays, Spicoli. Have a good holiday, guys. I'll talk to you later. Peace Uh, out, all right? Peace, my friend.